Here we are again, folks, at the New England Wireless and Steam Museum. I want to welcome everyone in this evening. We are back in the Merriam Steam Building, where we start some of the tours here with all of the reciprocating steam engines. I have a few of them running here, some of the smaller engines uh, running this evening. Running the line shaft. See up at the ceiling there. And some may recognize this the safe engine with riding cutoff from a video I did just uh, a week or so ago, uh, exploring the valve mechanism in that and quite what the riding cutoff is all about. If you haven't seen that, I'd encourage you to go take a look. And I hope everyone has been enjoying these videos along the way, leading up to Steam Up this year. It'll be held here on YouTube on October 3rd, and I hope you like and share these videos with any friends that might enjoy them. I do have one very unique piece of equipment uh, to show tonight. It's, uh, it's one that's right here on the line shaft. It probably doesn't get the attention that it deserves. And um, it really is a very unique piece from its day. Let's go take a look. So here we have the almond right angle noiseless drive. This would be mounted up on the ceiling in your factory. If you had line shafting, transmitting power throughout your facility, and that line shaft needed to turn a right angle corner, uh, there's several different ways that that could be achieved. You could have a series of pulleys there with belts. You could have a bevel gear configuration of this exact same thing. Uh, but of course, bevel gears would always make some noise with the meshing of the gears. So this is designated as the Almond Noiseless Right Angle Drive, built around 1884. It really is a fascinating piece with the way that it's both made and the movement. So after looking at this several times through the course of time, I haven't ever actually tried to disassemble it in any way, um, actually fascinated at or not understanding, should I say, of quite how they got the spherical rod ends into their into their holders um, on the counterweight uh, sections. So I have the feeling that they were forged in place. Um, kind of difficult to believe. I don't think that they would fit in with their flat spots in, in some type of way. It's just way too smooth for that. Um, but still, to imagine that they were making something like this with a precise fit of those balls, uh, spherical ends, able to, well, to make the spherical ends in the first place, and then uh, get them to fit, forge them into those ends so smoothly uh, that it would run this quietly, effortlessly, um, and smooth after you know, 100 and almost 40 years. Uh, of course, it's been here for some time, so it hasn't seen any service in a few decades, but uh, nonetheless, something that survives and runs quite smoothly through all those decades. And of course, this would be mounted the other way, we have it upside down here, it would be on it on the ceiling in your factory. So this would never be seen. Um, cover here down on the floor, which would be pointing down, that would be suspended uh, from the ceiling and you would be looking at this here. And that would be filled with oil to keep this mechanism lubricated at all times. It really is a mesmerizing movement and a fascinating piece of both engineering and manufacturing for its day. We hope everybody's enjoyed the look inside of the Almond Right Angle Drive, and I hope everyone is liking and sharing these videos. I look forward to seeing you all back here again on October 3rd for our Steam Up this year. Thanks for watching.